okay so this is how uh, this reaction goes so if we if we have a benzylic uh, carbon even then the same substitution can occur benzylic is the carbon attached to benzene directly suppose we have toluene so this carbon is directly attached to benzene and that carbon has a provision of carrying out resonance with the ring because it is directly attached to the ring so if we have a toluene then also nbs can give us a product and this time bromine will get attached to benzylic this position is benzylic so this time bromine will go and get attached to a benzylic carbon so there is a substitution one of the hydrogen comes out and bromine comes in generally you will write only one bromine there will be no multiple substitution because next time you are going to do substitution and next time you are going to draw free radical here then minus i effect of this bromine is going to operate and make this free radical less stable so that the reaction the extent of reaction is considerably decreased so we, you will draw only one bromine and there will be only mono substitution using nbs no di substitution so this is what the product would be so this is the whole idea of nbs it gives bromine slowly and that's how that's how that that's results in formation of substitution product and not addition product for the reason we now understand very well okay then let's solve the problem suppose i have propene this is a starred carbon starred carbon means it's a isotope of carbon and i have given nbs now you know only nbs alone can't do anything as i have told you before but the other reaction conditions are not given for convenience and for not blinding us with the details for making life simple and convenient so they will write only nbs so i am also writing only nbs now question is i get a plus b now you have to identify what is a and what is b now uh, how come we can get two products let's see let's do the mechanism first nbs is going to give bromine free radical slowly slowly this slowly slowly bromine free radical is going to come and abstract a hydrogen from a lilic position are we good it's going to abstract a hydrogen from a lilic position so i am going to get a free radical on this starred carbon fine and then again a bromine free radical is going to come and form a bond with this c dot giving me this so this is one of the product i don't know whether this is a or b but this is surely one of the product now how come i can get another product i can get another product because if you are vigilant enough you would realize that there could be resonance here this free radical is not going to stay on this carbon this is going to spread throughout the molecule via resonance so if we draw a resonating structure then this is what you're going to get and if this bromine get attached to another carbon having free radical then this would be the product in one of the product bromine is attached to starred carbon in another product bromine is not star attached to starred carbon it is attached to normal carbon so that's how they are different and that's why two products one of them will be a one of them will be b fine so you have to be very very vigilant if there can be resonance the in next incoming intermediate can attach to all the possible carbons which is having deficiency or having excess of an electron depending upon the reaction in this case there is a free radical free radical can move to both the carbons so you will get corresponding products from both the ends fine okay so let's solve one last problem from this reaction and this reaction would be over i have a i added n b s to that a i got b i added sodium metal to that b and then i got c then what i did i added i added hbr along with peroxide and i added two equivalent of this if i did that 
I got D. And when again I added sodium to that D, and I got E. And that E, I, something I have to give. So let me give E. E would be cyclohexane. You have to identify what is A, B, C, D. The time starts now. Uh, what you have to do is you have to really strengthen your get 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 your bones straight and solve this problem and then look for the solution. Otherwise, uh, you are self-destructing. You are on a self-destructing mode. You are just listening to me, not working out the problems. You are going to forget everything in no time. So, uh, solve this. And this is, uh, I tell you, this is from, this reaction is from alkene and this reaction is from alkene and this reaction is from alkene. So, all of them is from this chapter itself. And if you don't, if you cannot get how to solve it, then please, I beg you, go and revise the reactions of hydrocarbon, come back again and solve it again. Again, if you can't solve, again go back, re-revise, come back again. Keep on doing the process unless you are able to solve this. So, at, the la at last, I guess you will be able to solve this and you are listening any further only after solving this. And now, I assume that you have solved this. Now, let me tell you the answer. This is cyclohexane and this is D, sodium, nothing is given. Now, by the reaction which is in my syllabus and which I, I have studied, I can intuitively guess that this is Wood's reaction. This got to be Wood's reaction because there is only one reaction only in which I have only sodium as a reagent. So this is Wood's reaction. I have a gut feeling that this is Wood's reaction. And damn it, it has to be Wood's reaction. Because I can't get anything out of syllabus, right? This should be Wood's reaction. And this is indeed Wood's reaction. How do I know? Because I have given you the problem, so I know this is Wood's reaction. So let's believe that this is a Wood's reaction. And then we have get we have we have to find D. Now in Wood's reaction, what happens? You have Rx, two Rx comes together, form RR. This happens in acyclic molecule. So, if you have acyclic, those two acyclic will come together again give a acyclic. But here I can, I see it as a ring. And when I taught you its reaction, I taught you a problem where that there can be a closure of the ring. Suppose there are five carbons or suppose there is a six carbon like this and you have x on two ends. Because you have two x in the, in, in the same substrate, then those two carbon can participate to form a bond. How a bond hap occurs, you have a carbon on this in this R and you have a carbon in another R. And those two carbons forming the bond with X comes together and form a bond with themselves. So these two carbon forming bond with X will have a dot and dot first and then C dot and C dot will combine and when they form a bond then there is a closure of the ring. So if you are having a cyclohexane like this, then what you must have is an intermediate like this. And to have an interme intermediate like this, you must have a substrate like this. So D must, can be nothing but this. So D has to be 1, 6, dihalohexane. So D I am writing as 1, 6, dihalohexane. Fine. This is D. Fine. We are getting D from C and C and uh, how we are getting is we are getting it by adding HBr peroxide. Now if you remember HBr peroxide, we used this reaction when we studied uh, anti markovnikov addition of HBr on alkene. And if there has to be an anti markovnikov addition, that X get attached to less substituted it's carbon. Suppose we have a propene like this, then this is the carbon where X will get attached to the terminal or to the less substituted. And we indeed have a less substituted alkene uh, halogen. We indeed have a halogen attached to less substituted carbon. So what should be C? This is D, fine. There must be an alkene here. If there is an alkene here, al then the addition would be like this to a less substituted carbon. So if you want to get the alkene, you have to have an alkene here and you have to have an alkene here. This is, is what must be C. C must be, if you number it, C must be 1,5 hexadiene. That's what C must be. So C must be 
one five hexa diene. So this is C. This is D. Fine. Again, I can say a yes, sodium, and again I would say that this is a Wurtz reaction because I haven't seen any other reaction where sodium is the only reagent, unless it's an acid-base reaction. This is not an acid-base reaction because it's a hydrocarbon, and that gives me a confidence that this is not an acid-base reaction. So, see, from B to C, there must be a Wurtz reaction. In Wurtz reaction, you have dimerization. For dimerization, you have to see the symmetry. There's a symmetry from this plane. This part must be coming from this part and this part must be different individual different molecules and they might have they must have dimerized to give me this so if i have to get b then b must be this see if you carry out wurtz reaction would you get this from here there will be there will be another molecule and they would dimerize to give you this so b must be this there must be a halogen i don't mind chlorine bromine or iodine any anything can be there but you are carrying out you are getting b from a and and you are getting b by giving nbs and on a and nbs is n bromosuccinamide and this adds bromine so this x must be nothing but bromine so this is what b is and if you have to get a then a must be simply a alkene if if you do the back substitution remove bromine and add hydrogen that will give you A. So A must be propene. So this must be the solution. So we are done with NBS reaction. So we are done with reaction of alkene. So we can move on to alkynes. Now there will be some other reactions, but those though the proper place of those reaction is other chapters. Like suppose I can teach you ozonolysis. Ozonolysis does occur on alkene, but mostly ozonolysis is seen as a method of filtration of carbonyl compounds. So those reactions will come at the proper place. I'm not teaching you ozonolysis here. I'll teach you ozonolysis when I'll teach you carbonyl compound as a method of preparation of carbonyl compound. So by and large, the common reactions of alkene is over. There are other reactions which we'll be seeing at the proper place where they should be taught. Okay, reactions of alkene is over. Now we are moving on to alkyne.